G'day YouTube Impudinos, Luke here. Thank you for watching my Logan movie review. I was a fan of X-Men when I was a kid. Absolutely loved the cartoons, didn't read the comic books. Uh, Beast and Cyclops were my favorite characters. 2000 came around and the first X-Men was released at the cinemas. I went and saw it and uh, I fell asleep about halfway through. It was that uninteresting. Uh, I knew, just I just knew that it had an inkling that there would be more X-Men released, didn't go and see them at the cinemas, waited uh, 18 years for the X-Men collection to come out, bought it on Blu-ray, the box set, eight movies, X-Men, X-Men 2, X-Men Last Stand, X-Men Origin Wolverine, X-Men First Class, The Wolverine, X-Men Days of Future Past, and X-Men Apocalypse. Eight movies, $40, saved a bunch of money from not paying $20 per adult ticket to go and see them at the cinemas. It was not the best $50 I ever spent either. <laughs> they, eight movies of just absolute garbage, and it, like it was, I mean, it wasn't painful to watch them. It took me two weeks to... um. To, to, to bring myself to watch them but um like as in I bought them about uh I bought them about a month ago and it took me a span of you know two weeks for me to actually watch them because they were just that boring um X-Men Origins Wolverine was half decent I mean the making of that movie was actually better and more entertaining than the movie because you got to see uh, the fo a fight scene or a couple of fight scenes with uh, Liv Schreiber and Wolverine. Um, I don't know, I couldn't tell you what Liv Schreiber, like what his mutation was, but um, he's Wolverine's brother and they have some sort of mutant fight against each other, both very powerful alpha male physical dudes. It was an absolutely fantastic fight scene and the making of the movie was even better than the movie. Um, don't have a really lot of lot of good. If that had been worth my time, and I would have thought I could get views and subscriptions from doing an X Men, um, you know, box set collection movie review, I would have done it. Trust me. Um, but it wasn't worth it. So, uh, I don't really know why. Oops, glare. Sorry. Oop, there we go. I don't really know why it took the writers and producers, developers, whoever else, nine installments before they finally made a good one, but this was absolutely fantastic. Like, I don't really know how to do this review um, without giving away too many spoilers, so please be aware that if you haven't seen it yet, there are going to be probably spoilers in this review. Um, you've had a year to see it, so boohoo, that's your problem if you decide to keep watching. Um... Where do I begin? So, obviously, as you can tell by the title of the movie, it's predominantly based around Logan, Wolverine, played by Hugh Jackman. It's set in the future, a little ways after Apocalypse Now, or 2029, let's just say it's in 2029. There are not very many adult mutants left. Um, definitely, they don't make an appearance in this movie. Uh, the only mutants that make an appearance in this movie are some albino character, which albino, albino, however you say it, some albino character that I didn't really recall seeing uh, in any previous X-Men, but he is a mutant tracker that knows where they're at and can help other mutants get to their location and stuff like that. It kind of redundant a little bit. I, I don't know if he's redundant because Professor Xavier, I think he can read people's minds and has the ability ability to mind control people, but I'm not sure if he can track mutants. Can't quite remember. Anyways, whatever. The albino can. Maybe he's not redundant. I didn't really find him that interesting. <laughs> Logan and Professor Xavier, two main mutants from any like anything original that you guys would know. Two main mutants, and they have aged dramatically. Oh, like like we're talking. Professor Xavier just has. He's going crazy, lost control of his mind, um, you know, has these like seizures. Uh, I don't know if he's got a tumor or something like that. I don't, I couldn't quite tell. I've watched the movie twice and I still can't really tell what his condition is and, and why he's in such bad shape. Um, but he is, and he's, they're, they're hiding out in sort of, 
it's, I think they're hiding out sort of near the border of Mexico, but Logan drives a limo as a job to blend in with the humans, and um, he drives it, he goes to Vegas, so I don't really, I'm not really, don't know how far the border of Mexico is away from Vegas, but he does that for a job, and um, he's very grumpy and old, there's one scene there where he, it's not a fight scene, but he, um, you know, gets his claws to poke out of his hands, um, two of them come out fully, the third one doesn't, and then you see him have to physically drag it out. He's getting old. I am surprised by this because I didn't like. I knew mutants were born with their powers, and like they're humans, they, but they have special powers, and then they grow up in that, and then they harness their powers. But I didn't know that they aged and become old. So that's it's weird to me, but I guess they do. So whatever. Um, very old, very, you know, how Logan was, Wolverine was in previous X-Men, fighting fits, ripped, buff, slicing and dicing, no effort at all, rawr, rawr, cutting dudes up, not in this movie, a little bit, yes he does, but, you know, definitely not in the, not in the shape that he did in, in the previous ones. <sighs> cut a long story short I'm just going to tell you this like it's my favorite scene of the movie because I don't I really don't want to give away too many spoilers for you guys that haven't seen it I'm just going to tell you sort of 15 to 20 minutes into the movie it starts to get really good the first bit of the movie the first 15 to 20 minutes you're kind of sitting there like come on what's going to happen is this going to get interesting um, definitely not edgy sort of your seat type of waiting but it does leave you intrigued wanting to know more and it's a two hour and 20 minute roller coaster after the first 15 to 20 minutes. There, there's a company called, there's some sort of billion dollar company doing experiments and, and breeding these hybrid, you know, child um, mutants. Um, they're taking DNA from old mutants and, and creating their own ones to make super soldiers and stuff and have them fight for them. Uh, long story short, one of the nurses there, is a fan of the comic book, you know, she knows about Wolverine, she knows that mutants exist, she kidnaps this uh, girl, 10, 12, 13, roughly around that age, and um, kidnaps her because at some points they are going to stop um, breeding these kid mutants and kill them off because they figured that they can do something better. So she takes this, you know, this chick Laura because she knows it's like the Wolverine, it's bred from his DNA, so she kidnaps her, rescues, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, hunts down, tracks down Logan, takes it to him, says, you know, I need your help, I need your help, Logan being as stubborn and old as he is, he's like, no, piss off, I don't want, I don't, I don't want any of your trouble, whatever, he just doesn't want anything to do with her, um, he finally gives in, goes to see her, agrees to, you know, take the kid because Professor Xavier has been in his ear. Um, he says, I'll come back and get you tomorrow. Just wait here. Because he's trying to, he's hunting down some, like he's trying to buy some boat so that him and Professor Xavier and the albino can go and live out in the ocean away from humans and stuff like that. So he it agrees with her to come back and pick up her and the kid tomorrow because she gave him a certain amount of money. He's, he's going to take them to a safe place. Uh, he gets there. The girl's nowhere to be seen. The woman's dead. Um, so he's like, oh, you know, we'll tell with this. They're not here. Unbeknownst to you. And well, you know, actually, I, I shouldn't. Oh, I've got to say it anyways, because pre yes, so I'm going to, you don't get to see it, but the, the little girl with her backpack and her bouncing ball, she gets in the, the back of the limo, somehow it's locked, it's shut, but she gets in there, um, Logan dro drives back to get the professor and the albino, because they're about to take off in the boat, uh, I think it's the albino, uh, he's like covered so he can go out in the sun, he's got some sort of mask and, and stuff on, he finds the girl's ball and bag in the in the trunk and Logan who's is this I've got no idea the guy the main head in head of security dude from Chansogen rocks up and you know unhappy with Logan because Logan you know didn't like hasn't told you they had an agreement that he would there's I'm missing out a bit there but too many spoilers so um He's unhappy that Logan didn't tell him that, you know, he had the girl. Um, he, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Meanwhile, he's holding the girl's ball and bag. He's like the girl that belongs to that there. And she's inside eating cereal. More security rock up, like 20 to, you know, 20 to 30 adult security men rock up. He sends three of them in there to go get the girl. She's in there eating her cornflakes. They, you know, he one of the guys presents handcuffs to her. She's not impressed. They're interrupting her eating her cornflakes. She disposes of them with her claws. Three adult 
men security dudes screaming and yelling it's really this bit this this is where it starts to get good and this bit is absolutely fantastic so um i'm gonna like i'm gonna continue on so if you don't want to know turn away now she disposes of those three dudes. Uh, she presents herself outside to the rest of the remaining adult security forces. She's got her claws drawn. She's like, you know, she's got them down by her side, clears phys claws physically out, and she's just got this look on her face like, you assholes just interrupted my cornflakes. I'm not very happy with you. <laughs> the main shot caller dude, security head of security says she's just a girl go and get her so then they all chase after her she scampers through a, a small space that they can't get her through long story short she slices and dices through pretty much the majority of these guys there's a few of them left they grab her they're trying to get the handcuffs on her they're struggling the main security dude shoots a harpoon to try and snare her snatch her make it easy for the other guys that enrages her she just absolutely demolishes or demolishes she absolutely slices and dices them cuts the um, harpoon off with her claws runs to the limo because logan's like you know see you later kid you can fight your own battles you're clearly capable i'm out of here with the professor <laughs> Somehow, as Logan's bat out of hell taken off out in the limo, she ends up rolling onto the the bonnet, scampers up the the roof, and um, in through the in in through into the back of the limo through the sunroof. Meanwhile, Professor Xavier, who we all know is disabled, he's you know sliding around trying to balance himself, hasn't got a seatbelt on yet with Logan's driving, and he's in the back, he's like you know sliding around, and he's like Logan, slow down, don't forget the girl, and then she pops in through the sunroof, and Professor Xavier's like Laura, you okay? <laughs> Quite a funny scene. Um, at that bit i laughed it was action packed that is like a i'd like maybe five to seven minute um action just slicing and dicing as i say roller coaster when they escape they take off it sort of just it plateaus it sort of dies down there's a new hill they're climbing up they're resting and from then on in it's just rest action rest action ending the ending is really emotional um there's like i don't know what we call it but there's like a, a salty liquidy type of substance that streams from our eyes when we when we're not happy about something that was uh streamed out of my eyes for <laughs> look the ending was really sad uh they part ways they say goodbye and um very sad i i hate goodbyes like real life in movies can't stand goodbyes hate it always get emotional don't know why it's actually i do it's something from my childhood never not going to talk about anyways moving right along um hate goodbyes and the ending is really emotional the movie is absolutely fantastic it's, it's an action movie but the storyline is so good and um they got it right after nine installments sorry x-men fanboys that loved the series i don't know what to tell you i thought it was absolute garbage logan was fantastic if you haven't seen it yet i highly recommend it thank you for watching like comment subscribe or not thank you for watching anyways please tell me my stop button's going to work